Let's take a look at how to add text. So there's the text tool here, which is the T. You can set the color. I recommend setting that to something that you can see. You may as well just set this to centered because text is usually centered. And you can go ahead and pick a font. I like this Seago print bold. It looks like a nice comic book style font. And then what you want to do is avoid clicking inside of your shape because that's going to cause some weird problems. So just click and go ahead and add your type. Use the move tool to go ahead and move your type around. If you want to size your type, you can go back to the type tool and you can pick a very specific size if you want a specific point size. Or you can use control T to enable free transform and you can scale this up and down. If you hold shift, you're going to keep it from squishing and squashing. If you don't hold shift, it's going to squish. You might not want that. So hold shift. If you hold alt and shift, you can scale it from the center. So we might position it like that, and you'll have to click the check to commit when you're done changing your text every time, so make sure you click that check. You can edit the text really quickly by double clicking on the T in the layers palette here to select everything. And you can of course change the color of the text. Now you can do it here, or you can do it here in the character palette. If you don't see any of these palettes here, they're all hiding under the window menu. You can also add an effect. You could add a stroke. And you could add a color overlay, which I find is kind of a quicker way to change the color sometimes. And then if you want to go ahead and group your text with your word bubble, hold shift and click on your bubble while your text is selected and use control G to group them. We'll call this number five. That way when we move this group, the text and the bubble go together and we can move it somewhere else. And of course, if you want to put this into another composition, you can right click on the bubble, you can choose duplicate group, and you can put it in a pre-existing composition that you have open, or you can choose a new composition. And there you go, your bubble's in there, and it's still editable. If I want to edit the text, we can do that. If you want to edit the shape, go back to the shape layer and you can go ahead and even move that point there. Now let's take a look at how we can have our characters overlap our word bubbles. I'm going to go ahead and delete the mask that's on this bubble here. I'm going to right click on the mask and choose delete layer mask. You'll see that I had it nested. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and nest it first. And then what I'm going to do is go to my artwork layer. I'm going to use the magic wand to select the red and hold shift and select the black. That way I get this nice edge here. I'm gonna go back to the nest layer and I'm going to go ahead and select the brush tool. Make sure that I have black selected and I'm going to use this hard edge brush to just paint over this area here. Make sure I get the whole thing. I'm going to do control D to deselect and you can see I have this nice mask here that I added to the mask that I had for the nesting. Next, let's take a look at how to create thought bubbles. Those are the little cloudy looking bubbles when somebody's thinking. So we want to go to the shape tools and look for the polygon tool. And if you click on this little gear here, you'll be able to change the different options. We can set the number of sides as well. So let's set the number of sides pretty high. Let's say 25 sides. And if we go to this little gear here, we can choose to create a star. And if we indent the sides, we can get some different effects here. So let's go ahead and just try this first and see what we get. So I'm going to draw a star and you can see that the sides aren't very indented. So we get this kind of weird little jagged circle. So let's do a few undos and let's try that again. And this time when we choose the options here, let's indent the sides by 50%. We'll go ahead and drag out our star, and now you can see you get much sharper points. So this would of course work good for like, you know, somebody's getting punched or there's something exploding. You could put like pow or something in there. You see those kind of bubbles a lot. And of course you could stretch it like that, and you could rotate it if you like. Now, if you don't want this kind of starburst, you want a nice little cloudy shape, you basically make the same exact shape, except this time you go to smooth corners. Now when you draw your shape, you're going to get 
a nice arc. Of course, you don't want your sides to be indented too much, so let's try 10% and let's see if that works better. Now you get a more cloudy effect. And if we go to the ellipse tool, we'll go ahead and draw some little ellipses here. And I'm gonna to go to the move tool. I'm just gonna hold alt and I'll drag out two copies here. I can hit control T to make one of them smaller. Go to the next one and make that just a little bit smaller too. And then you can go ahead and line these up wherever you want. And then if we wanna put a stroke on these, let's go ahead and click back on the word bubble here. Let's add a stroke. We'll go ahead and right click on that layer, choose copy layer style. I'm gonna hold shift to select the ellipses and paste layer style. And there you go, we have a nice thought bubble. We can go ahead and group these layers and label it. And if we wanna scale it down, we can scale it down and move it wherever we like. So that's how you can draw dynamic word bubbles for your comic books and cartoons using Photoshop CC. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And don't forget to click the subscribe button to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.